Okay, this video again is about the book I wrote after I was baptised. Here it is. Here's a copy. And, uh, see it, it's really real. It's a first edition. Okay. These are the chapters. Some digital artwork I did. Acknowledgements, um, there. The one who holds the keys to death and Hades be praised forevermore. Um, here we go. So it starts off, and uh, the Holy Spirit actually told me that all this was going on right now, but I set it a thousand years in the future. Um, but most of this has actually already happened. It starts off with a scientist called Daniel, and uh, he basically has invented a electronic arm that can extend life expectancy and that has like supernatural power um, so he cuts off his arm and uh, basically um, what actually happens there then on this is the prequel so this is like uh, explains what happens again and then you've got another scientist called Ruben okay um, he's a kind of good scientist okay and what actually happens is it's a government technology base is broken into by the bad scientist guy who's now called um, Tron okay so that's how the novel starts okay you see wormhole technology basically um, going to different planets through um, space and time travel technology which is uh, Einstein Rosen Bridges which I uh, did a little picture of some more digital art I did that's I've got that obviously in the front of Starstruck channel, okay, the digital art I did um, about 2000 or something like that when I completed this book, this is introduction and uh, and then the book starts for real and what you've got is uh, Ruben's descendant called Matthew Callis, so he's now Captain Callis and he actually goes um, through this um, space and time and discovers a whole new galaxy um, it seems to be in the Orion Nebula and there's just some activity um, in this it takes you down to the planet one of the planets there okay um, they investigate why the planet's been um, been attacked by this uh, dragon like creature okay um, some of the chapters are quite fun Okay, here we've got them in a um, space base drinking some uh, space drink. <laughs> um, so it's quite fun. And then we go on to chapter 3. Now the, the Borks are a race, an alien race. What we would know as Christians as Nephilim. Okay, they do exist. They were all destroyed during the flood, but they came back after the flood. And uh, just as Jesus says, you know, the last days will be the days of Noah, so there will be Nephilim um, involved in activities during the end, um, before Jesus comes back. So it's just a little joke. Welcome home, dorks. So whatever mission that they did, the, bar the Barkin um, aliens didn't do very well on that one. But what they're trying to figure out is who the dragon is, because it's killing life all over the galaxy it seems planets are going down life is just being um, destroyed and they're trying to work out what the reason is and they're, they're trying to connect it to the dragon okay now you don't really find out until sort of close to the end who's affiliated with the dragon who isn't okay because everybody's trying to keep things hidden they're like oh we don't know anything about it or if they do anything they just lie okay so what you've got is Captain Carlos just with the team of Zed, Kiani and so on. Um, they're trying to find out answers and they're being sort of, um, sort of, um, I guess, deceived along the way by these creatures. Okay, these creatures are not telling the full story. Okay. So, uh, obviously, these um, Earth people are far away from Earth, but they're discovering just a whole new world out there that the universe is teeming 
with different different sorts of life, but you know wh which of this life is authentic and uh, which of it isn't. And uh, as we go on through the novel, you can see it's got like 300 and it's quite a few pages long, okay. But as you go on through the novel, you discover that some of these beings are doing genetic experiments. They're actually producing hybrids. And then eventually we go back down to the planet at the start of the novel. And uh, we, we we basically just, it, it's kind of like an earth setting, as it were. And uh, so it just explains a lot of a lot of things in a, you know, a novel format, okay. Um, just gives you a very good rundown about what's really happening in our galaxy as well, okay. And about the religions and what they believe and so on and so forth. Okay. Now, this little video is a disclosure video. Okay. You need to understand that the technologies that we have and we were discussing are not theoretical. We have actionable intelligence that Stephen Greer. Congress or executive action can find regarding current operations and I just want to go through a list of them very quickly of these facilities and corporations for which we have witnesses who uh, can be subpoenaed by the committees of the Congress. Uh, this was developed at the request of Congressman Christopher Cox of Orange County and with whom I met and was later de further developed for uh, the briefing for that we put together for President Obama. These facilities are the Edwards Air Force Base and subsections where... These facilities uh, have Nephilim the in them. The but these people are just saying that they're aliens. But they're actually Nephilim. That's what the Bible tells us they are. They're genetic hybrids that the fallen angels um, are involved with uh, producing. ...have the schematics was seen by Frank Carlucci and others on our witness team. Uh, tabletop Mountain and blackjack control. Uh, the aerospace facilities there are the Northrop Anthill facility, Tihon Ranch, the McDonnell Douglas Lano plant, Lockheed Martin Hellendale plant, and the Phillips lab. At the Nellis Air Force facility, so-called Area 51, no one calls it that. There's S4 and S12, Hoot Mesa, Groom Lake, and a no number of sub-facilities. The most important facility is in Utah, near Provo, the Dugway Proving Grounds, all of which is now, this novel is actually set around there, would you believe? Part of it is set around there where the government bases are, Nevada, Utah, around there. ...facilities include Los Alamos National Labs with underground connectors to the so-called Dulce area where the biological work is being done, and Kirtland Air Force Base in the complex there... So even though this is a science fiction, um, maybe a lot of this has actually happened, okay? So it could be science fact. In Arizona, near Fort Huachuca, which is Army Intelligence Headquarters, there is a UGB underground base where one of our witnesses, who will testify, worked on nine separate extraterrestrial vehicles that had been down through advanced electromagnetic pulse weapons, and there are several different species of extraterrestrial biologicals stored at that facility. Extraterrestrial, they're Nephilim, okay, they're and genetic hybrids. This goes on. That uh, God destroyed in Noah's flood. Okay. Area Just so we understand. Uh, Mountain, where we have witnesses in our team who can be subpoenaed, uh, where that we have tracked extraterrestrial vehicles in our solar system that we're measuring 26 miles in diameter. <sighs> 26 uh, miles, yeah. Also, uh, facilities About the size of New York City or so. Pine Gap, Very good. The so-called Alice Springs facility. Not something you would miss normally in a clear night with a powerful telescope. Australia. Um, I recently talked to the Deputy Prime Minister of Australia about this. Uh, also, the Redstone Arsenal and the Marshall Space Flight Center. We have a scientist at the Redstone Arsenal under, who works under contract for IT&T who have developed these transdimensional systems. He was under contract... Transdimensional systems, did you hear that? Out, and he was then transdimensional the beings, transdimensional systems, they're able to, to travel through different dimensions and parts of space and time. That's what Starstruck is about. Have, and this information is on the flash drive given to Stephen Bassett's staff. Then you're all welcome to review. Thank you. Uh, let's just see a guy from Canada. Um, 
who was part of the Canadian government, who has basically been involved uh, with, um, well, let's just find out. He's telling us that UFOs really exist. Well, God also knows that as well. But if they're, it's a nice name, Paul Hellier. But he's now explaining exactly Just what these beings are. Survive, see? Uh, the idea of the, the tooth fairy and Santa Claus when they become adult. I think that taxpaying citizens are quite capable of accepting the new and broader reality that we live in a cosmos teeming with life of various sorts. Life that God created or life that has been genetically manipulated by fallen angels? What I'm saying here is Heller made headlines in 2005 when he publicly announced that he believed in extraterrestrials. Okay, This is a man from the Canadian government. interest in uh, UFOs uh, was not very great until eight years ago. When I was Minister of Defense, of course, I got uh, sighting reports, but I was too busy unifying the Canadian Armed Forces uh, to be able to worry about them. So I, I wouldn't say I was a skeptic. I wasn't. I was an agnostic. I didn't know whether they were real or whether they weren't. But there was a young man in uh, Ottawa whose name was Pierre Juno. And uh, he started sending me things about the UFO file. One of the things he sent me one day was um, a book called The Day After Roswell. And I found it absolutely uh, fascinating. While I was reading the book, my uh, nephew uh, said, what are you reading? I told him uh, what it was, and he said, well, I'm a skeptic. And a couple of days later, he phoned and said, I was talking to the general. The general, incidentally, was a former United States Air Force general that uh, he had met uh, in his aviation career. And uh, I told him what you were reading, and he said, every word of it is true and more. I phoned the general. Before I could even say hello and how are you, he said, every word is true and more. And he said that there had, in fact, been face-to-face -face meetings between United States officials and extraterrestrials from other star systems. And with that assurance, I decided to go public and say, for the first time, of anyone of cabinet rank from the G8 uh, group of countries, that UFOs are as real as the airplanes flying over your head, and said it without any, res any restriction whatsoever. As soon as the wire systems were <laughs> had got the story out, information started coming in. Dozens of emails with personal experiences of how people have seen vehicles uh, flying over their their homes, and uh, in some cases how they've been abducted. And uh, I got these things from. Now remember that the Pope in 2008 said it's uh, okay to believe in aliens. I would not, uh, they're not aliens, remember, they're Nephilim. Say how many terrestrials Sons and are living on daughters, Earth perhaps, of the fallen angels. Of okay. Reports of several species that uh, are here, have bases here. There's one species that looks something like a praying mantis. And then the uh, short uh, greys are the ones that you see in the cartoons. The tall greys look much different. They're more, they look more like uh, humans. And uh, the Nordic Blondes, for example, uh, are so similar to humans that they can walk uh, down the street and not be detected. None of them are exactly the same. They are way ahead of us in medicine, agriculture, and uh, still, I guess, presumably in technology. There's no question the U.S. government 
took this whole idea of advanced technology very seriously and started back engineering and spending a lot of money on it soon after the, uh, the, the crashes at uh, Roswell in 1947. They have a very interesting way of keeping things quiet, and that is everything is on a need to know. So you could be working in a, in a lab or you could be making a, some kind of piece of machinery, and you wouldn't know what it was for. And then the guy that gets it, he would only know what it fits into. And this goes all the way up to the ladder. The rating was higher, the security rating was higher than for the H-bomb. So one of the top, and still is, that's the way it works. Which technologies are you certain that have been shared with us from extraterrestrials? Fiber optics, microchips, uh, Kevlar, Mark and, the Beast, uh, yeah, Mark lasers, of the Beast, very chip. That's what the Mark of the Beast is. Where their technology the technology is from uh, the Nephilim, or advanced from, ours, from like the Fallen Angels, and uh, Those were the that's how they're going to corrupt humanity through, through the Mark of the Beast. There had been lots of visits to Earth, probably going back thousands of years, but the level of activity took on a new dimension after the first um, atomic bomb was, uh, was set off in New Mexico in 1945. And all of a sudden, the, uh, the number of sightings increased. And my thesis is that because they know something we don't know, and that is, Every atomic bomb that is put off on Earth has an effect on other parts of the cosmos. They were concerned about it. And I use the uh, this idea that the children are playing with matches. They're afraid that we're going to blow up our planet so that it would be uninhabitable both for ourselves. Well, is the answer Jesus Christ, not according to this guy, and, uh, not according to these like fallen that. angels or Nephilim? Do you think the answer is repent and turn to so Jesus? No. The answer larger, to them is get a microchip in your forehead. And, uh, okay, that's that's the solution to these beings, the, okay? The American bases, the Russian bases, but uh, bases, God is going to allow this so that he can out exactly find out who wants to serve Jesus Christ and, are and all that sort of thing. Uh, so that these beings can also exactly be judged as well at so Jesus Christ's second the, coming. The information on tap uh, if we should start doing anything silly, that they might, in fact, try to, uh, to intervene. Yeah. I would say, I would hope. There are a couple of well-known cases. There was one in western United States where the uh, UFO was looking at their intercontinental ballistic missiles and putting them out of action. And uh, this was despite precautions. And now, this is the false piece that the Bible speaks about. You see that these beings are trying to bring, the, bring so their own peace into the world, okay? It's not the peace of Jesus Christ. It's the peace enforced through these beings with advanced technology who came into existence when the fallen angels fell and uh, mated with women. And they were all wiped out on the earth, but they actually came back after the flood, okay? And they have bases all around the galaxy, all around this solar system, on the moon, on Mars, everywhere. And I said, no. And then they said, well, then we can't really take you seriously. But um, my first actual sighting, I was uh, at my place in Muskoka a couple of years ago for Thanksgiving. My wife, Sandra, said, uh, I'm going out to look for stars. And here was this very, very bright star right out yeah, over star the, the bay. We both but. looked at it. These and are sons of the morning, but not the morning star. The morning star is Jesus Christ. Location but these are the sons of the morning. In other words, they're Lucifer. They're fallen beings. Well, stars and satellites and airplanes don't do that. They can't do it. And it was a tremendously uh, interesting experience, and one, of course, that uh, confirmed uh, my beliefs that they are real. After I went public, uh, my daughter who lives in the old house here at Christmas time, I saw one go by, go by the her window and across behind the boathouse. And the family were saying that they thought that the UFOs had uh, come to get me.